In this channel, I document the lessons I come across while I'm self-learning to make my own indie apps. I chose to start this path with Figma so that I'd be able to design my apps. The best way I found to learn something new is to watch practical examples and make projects. So I started a project-based exercise by creating the playlist Pinterest clone Figma. I started working on the homepage. In the first video, I made a quick prototype, then I made the header and footer components, then the cart component, then I put it all together in the design of Pinterest homepage. But the design is not responsive. If I try to resize it, the design completely breaks. So the next step in this exercise is responsiveness. So I made a Figma community file that walks you through how I took this design and made it responsive. It's a free community file. You'll find a link to it in the description and in the first comment. Simply open the link while locked in Figma and press on the duplicate button and you'll have a copy of it in your drafts folder. In this video, I will walk you through how to use this file, and I will show you how to take the Pinterest design frame that you'll find in the file and make it responsive by going over each step with you. Here's the page that you will find when you open the link in the description. All you need to do is press on this button to duplicate it. It will open a new tab. If you go to the drafts folder, you'll find it there with the changes that you made saved to it. Now let's look at the pages of the file. The first page is the thumbnail and some links on the side. If you want to open a link, hover above it and then press on open link. It should open on your browser if you're using the app or in a new tab. Then we have two other pages. They are both the same page. One is in dark mode and the other is light. Now let's look at the guide page. A very useful shortcut to use is to press command backslash to remove the UI or to toggle the UI on and off if you want to make space for yourself. We have two main parts in the page, the design and then the steps that we will take to make it responsive. The design elements are in order and they start from the left side to the right and the responsive elements start from the top to the bottom. So let's quickly look at the design elements. This is what we did in the first video. You'll find a link to it here and you can open it if you want to watch it. I just took a screenshot, took the color palette from it, then I made a quick wireframe just to understand how I will lay out the elements in the same way the Pinterest design lays out the card elements. Then in the third and fourth videos, I made the components for the file. And finally, in the last video, in the Pinterest clone Figma playlist, we put everything together and we created this design. Now we'll press Shift 1 again to zoom out. Now let's take a look at the steps. You also find a link to this video above them. If at any time you get stuck, you can get back to the video. Each step I put inside a new frame with instructions next to it. From this point down, you'll read the instructions and then this is the frame that you will start working on. So start by reading the instructions. Then you can resize the frame to see what changes took place after these instructions have been applied to it. And then you can go to your frame and make the same steps. Each step will have a blue highlight for the main area where changes will be made. Some steps will have a gray highlight for a secondary area where it might be useful to notice what's happening in it. So work your way down after reading each step, select the frame and then test what changes took place, then go back to your frame and apply it. And at the end of the file, this is something that I did manually, but it works like the breakpoints plugin or breaking points plugin. I don't remember its name. Let me check. The breakpoints plugin, where you can select the frame and then change it. And when it hits a breaking point, the frame will switch to the specific breaking point or to another frame. So this is just a way to present it. We'll have a look at this later after we finish. One thing I like to do when I'm working with a file like this is to use the shortcuts Shift 1 and Shift 2 as part of my workflow. So I will press now Shift 1 just to have an overview of the page. We want to start at Step 0, so I will select the Step 0 frame and I will press Shift 2. What Shift 2 does is it zooms to your selection all the way down. And then after we're done with Step 2, I will press Shift 1 again just to have an overview of the file, then select the other step and then Shift 2 again. And then I just move around the page using Shift 1 and Shift 2 like this. Now you know what is in the file and how it works. So let's do these steps together. We'll start with step 0. So I will select the frame and press Shift 2 to zoom all the way on it. And let's look at the instructions next to the frame. It says, notice how the design breaks when resized. So I will select the frame. I'll hover to its side. 
and then I will resize it. And as you can see, it breaks. Everything inside it is not responsive. Even if I pull it down, no response whatsoever. So I press Command Z to put it back in place, and then I will read the next step. Notice how the header is already responsive. Here's the header. I will press on it to select it and hover to its side, and I will resize it. And as you can see, it is responding to the change. But why is the header responding to the change? If you want a step-by-step -step guide, you have to refer to the video. The link to it is over here. But quickly, let me show you the design panel. So I will press Command backslash to bring the UI back. And I will press Command shift backslash to remove the layers panel. So if you want to toggle the layers panel on and off, you can press Command shift backslash and you will have more space and at the same time you can do things to your design. So with the header selected, let's look at the design panel. And as you can see, auto layout is set to this frame. If I select this frame, you can see that auto layout is grayed out. So there's no auto layout set here. Auto layout already takes care of the placement of the elements inside it. And this is what makes this specific way of making a design responsive easy. Let me bring up the layers panel to show you the frames in this design. We have the header, and then we have the main, and then we have the footer. And as you can see, the header, already auto layout is set to it. The main, the one that holds the pins, already auto layout also is set to it. And the footer, it only holds the create pin button, but I also set auto layout to it. So now we only need to set constraints for three frames only not to every single element in the design. If I did not do that, I would need to set a constraint here, to set a constraint to the drop down button, to set a constraint to the profile image, to the search bar, to the icon. So by designing using mainly auto layout, or generally designing inside, inside containers like this, like we have three containers here, makes it much easier to make it responsive afterwards. Let's get back to the header. If I press enter, to select all the elements inside the header and look at the resizing. Resizing is how the element reacts to the changes that happen to the frame that the element is inside. You see that it says mixed for the width and for the height. That means that the settings are different for different elements. All the elements are actually set to fixed width for resizing. If I select the profile image, you can see that its width resizing is set to fixed width. So Whatever happens to the frame is going to keep the same width. The drop down button, also set to fixed width. The Pinterest icon, also set to fixed width, except for the search bar. It is set to fill container. That means that it changes its size according to the changes that happen to its container. If the container gets larger, the container is the frame, the auto layout frame. So if the frame, which is the container gets larger, the search bar will expand. If it gets smaller, the search bar will get smaller as well because it's set to fill that space. And that is why the header is already responsive. One more thing to notice before we move to step one. What are we trying to do? We are trying to create a Pinterest clone in Figma. So we have to observe one more thing, how responsiveness is handled in the Pinterest design. We'll move on to the Pinterest page and let's look at it and see how they handle responsiveness in their design. This would be a good time for you to pause the video, go to the Pinterest website, log into it, and then observe the changes that happen when you resize, and then come back to the video and I will tell you the things that I observed. But I know that you are a lazy bum and you're not going anywhere, so we'll move on. Let's try to resize the window. The first thing to notice is what we already have in our design. The search bar is already the only thing in the header that is changing its size, while all the other elements have fixed width. We already handled this. But the second thing to notice is when we push the frame inwards in our design, this area where the create pin button lives is our footer. So when the footer starts getting close to the pins, they let it hover above it until the pins are already touching the frame and there is no space for them anymore, then they remove one column. And if you go all the way down, they lock resizing to two pins. So when the width gets smaller, they allow the create pin button to hover above the pins and then they remove one column when the frame hits the frame that is holding the pins. 
But what happens when you move outside, you move all the way until the frame that is holding the create pin button is no longer touching the pins. And what they do is they add a new column. Now let's get back to Figma and let's move to the step below it. Step one, the blue color is the main area where we will make changes to, which is the header in this case. So let's look at the outcome. This is what should happen after we finish this step. If I resize the frame, now you can see the header is sticking to the frame and it's responding to the change that is happening. Before it was not responding. Before if I resize the frame, the header is not moving at all. So let's move to the frame that we will work on. So I'll press shift one to zoom out. I will select the frame that we will work on and I will press shift two and I'm zoomed all the way on it. I will select the header and to bring the UI back, I will press command backslash. Again, if at any moment you need the layers panel, you can toggle it on and off using command shift backslash. Now we have the header selected and let's look at its constraints. As you can see, Figma by default constraints elements to the left of the frame and the top of the frame that they live inside. So if I select the header, you can see the constraints left and top, the footer left and top, the main frame left and top as well. This is why if we move the frame to the right, it doesn't move with it because it's constrained to the left. If we move the frame below, the main frame is not moving with it because it's constrained to the top and so on. So let me press Command Z and select the header. What do you think we should do? If I move the frame to the left, the frame that is holding everything, the header is already sticking to the left. If I move it top, the header is already sticking to top. The only thing left is to also constrain it to the right. So let's select it and I can add a constraint to the right here by pressing shift and then pressing on the right. Or you can do it from the drop down menu here. You can change the size to fixed and left and right. You can leave this as it is to hug contents. Now let's select the MacBook Pro frame and let's see how it responds. If I move it to the right, it is resizing. If I move it to the left, it is resizing. We're done with the first step. So I'm going to press shift one to zoom out. Then I will select step two then shift two to zoom in. Let's remove the design panel for now. As you can see, the blue highlight is on the footer. So we're going to work on the footer. Let's see the outcome first. So I will select the frame and then I will resize it. And as you can see, the header is already resizing with it. And now the footer is also resizing with it. If I pull the frame down, it's sticking down. So let's just go and do it. So I press shift one to zoom out. I will select the MacBook frame and press shift two to zoom on it. Zoom out a little bit and press command backslash to bring up the design panel. So let's select our footer. It's already constrained to left and top. This is not what we want. We want it to stick to the top and stick to the bottom and stick to the right. So I'll press and hold the shift key and press on the right, then on the bottom. And now let's try resizing it and checking if it's working. And it is working. If I go down, it is sticking down to it, to the right, it's sticking to it. But there's a problem while it should hover above the pins, it's below the pins. So in this case, I will select the main frame, I'll right click on it. And then I will select send to back. And now let's try again. And now the footer frame is above the pins, which is exactly what we need it to be. Again, I will zoom out shift one, I will select step three, and then I will press shift two to zoom on it. As you can see, the blue highlight is on the main frame. This is where we're going to work on. Let's select the frame and let's resize it and see what happened in this step. Now, if I move the frame out, the pins are also responding, not just the footer and the header. And if I move it in, it's doing exactly what I wanted to do. But of course, if I get the width too small, the design breaks. And if it gets too large, even though the design doesn't look like it's broken here, but this is not the design we want to have. So to us, this is a broken design. But what would happen if I pull it downwards? Also, this is what we want to see. It's just showing us more pins. So basically, what it says here is that the mainframe should now be partially responsive. We've reached the limit of what we can do to make this design responsive at its current state. Now we need to create breaking points. Figma is a design tool. I cannot tell it to programmatically add a column here when a certain width is reached. And I cannot tell it programmatically remove a column here when this width is reached. Therefore, I have to create 
breaking points. What does that mean to create a breaking point? I have to create new frames, like the frames you see below, for certain widths where the design will change. So here, for example, we added a column here, we removed a column. So a breaking point is a point at which we will change something about our design. So each frame will work for a certain range. But before we start thinking about breaking points, let's first handle the constraints for the main frame here by following these steps. So I'll press Shift-1 to zoom out, then press our Mac book frame that we're working on, Shift-2 to, to zoom in on it. Let's select the main frame, the frame that is holding pins. Again, it is constrained to left and top. I can leave it constrained to top and add a constraint to the bottom and center. Let's do it from the drop down menu. So fixed width, top and bottom, then our content and center. And let's see, it is staying to the center. If we pull it down. So now if you look at the drop down, its height is fixed and set to top and bottom and its width is set to hug contents and set to center. Why not fixed? Because we're going to remove columns and add columns. So we want this frame to keep hugging the contents. Whatever the size of the contents inside it, it will keep hugging it. If it's fixed and we remove one column, the frame outside is not going to react and this is going to create problems for us. Now let's check if it's working. So I will select the MacBook frame and I will resize it. It seems to be working fine. The main frame is staying at the center and it's sticking to the top and sticking to the bottom. We are done with this step. Let's press Shift 1 and move to the second step. Let's go back to step 3. Select step 3, press Shift 2. It says here that this size of the frame, 1728, is the maximum size of this frame. If we increase the width of this frame, you can see now the footer is not touching the main frame anymore. Now the design is broken and we need to create breaking points for widths that are larger than 1728 pixels. And if the width is smaller, it's okay, the design is not broken until you reach this point, which is around 1,400 and something, 406 maybe, and then the design is broken and we need to create a breaking point and remove one column. So each one of those frames will be responsive, but in this certain range. So let's move to the next step, step four. We're going to create a new frame that replaces the default one when the width hits a certain point, when the width is larger than the size of this frame when the width is larger than 1,728 pixels. Before we go and do the step ourselves, let's have a look at this frame first, where the step is already done, and let's resize it. And as you can see, the frame is responsive until this certain point, and then it will break. And this is the maximum width of it, and then more than that, and the design breaks. So, you know the drill, Shift-1, select our design, Shift-2, zoom out a little bit, select our frame, press and hold the Alt key to copy it, then make a copy of it below it. What are we going to do? We're going to create a breaking point for the design that is larger than this frame. So I'll select this column just by double clicking and then I will press Command C, Command V to copy it. Then I will select the frame and pull it out all the way till this footer is barely touching the pins. If it's hard for you to see, you can select the footer and add a fill to it and give that fill some color to make it obvious. Then resize until they are barely touching around here. It doesn't need to be very specific. And then I will rename this frame to breaking point 2011. We're going to switch to this frame the moment our frame is larger than this one. So if this one is 1724 pixels, the moment it becomes 1725 pixels, then we will switch to this breaking point. So the range will be from 1725 pixels to 2011 pixels. An optional thing that you can do is that you can double click till you select this column and change the order of the images so it does not feel repetitive. Right, Shift-1, go out. Step-5, Shift-2. What is happening here? The first frame that we started with had five columns, one, two, three, four, five. Then we created one with six columns. We cannot create a breaking point for each size, so we're going to do 
just one breaking point above just to show whoever is going to program this application what is going to happen when the width increases and then we're going to create breaking points all the way down so in this step we're just going to remove one column and then create a new breaking point so let's get back press shift one then go to one of those frames whichever you want we can take this one copy it pressing and holding the alt key and grabbing it select it shift two to zoom on it and let's remove two frames uh, two columns as you can see the design is broken so select the desktop frame and resize it till the pins are barely touching the footer and then notice what is the width it's 1440 so 1440 pixels this is the size of this breaking point we don't need to go to the other steps because it's the same thing from here so let's copy this frame shift 2 to zoom on it and let's remove another column and again select the frame over to its side and resize it till the footer is barely touching the pins inside what is the size of the frame 1156 so copy it and rename this frame to it and let's copy it again press and hold the sh the alt key and grab it below select the frame shift 2 to zoom on it keep pressing till you select this column delete it and then select the frame and resize it then see what is the width 872 rename it to rename it just double click over here 872 pixels and with that we have created all the breaking points so i can come here and remove this fill so i will select the footer and then in the design panel go to fill and then press on this minus button to remove the fill now we'll remove the fill from here as well and remove the fill here and here so now we have one two three four five frames this is the default frame or the main frame that we were working on and then we created one breaking point for a larger width and then we created breaking points all the way down until we had two pins left and then the design will be locked so it cannot be smaller than this one thing to notice is that this design will be responsive on desktop devices or laptops computers it will also work on tablets but not on mobile with this you can consider that you have finished making this design responsive you have set all the breaking points and whoever is going to design this website is going to know exactly how it's going to work but we can take this one step further let's say that i want to present my design to show to other people i like to present designs inside devices so this design was made for a macbook pro 16 inch so if i want to present it just to show other people how it would look like inside a device i can press on the canvas then switch to prototype and select macbook pro 16 inch frame then select the frame again and present it here's our design but if i want to present it inside different devices i'm going to have to do some work to guess which design is going to fit which device it would be easier for you to present it without a device but we can take this a step further by using the breakpoint plugin so if you go to the community and type in the search bar breakpoint then move to plugins you can have a look and install the breakpoints plugin and this is how it works you resize your frame and then it will automatically switch to the breaking point once you hit it this i did not create using the plugin but i was researching breaking points generally then i came across an article made by the guy who designed the breakpoints plugin and he was explaining the hack that they used to create the breakpoints plugin it is something that takes some time to set up that's why they created the plugin to make the process more quickly I read the article i understood what he did then i tried to apply it to my design over here to create this thing but it was very difficult i could not do it so what i did is that i went to an older file where i used this plugin i analyzed what they did exactly and then i recreated it here but it does take a lot of time and effort i just did it as an exercise so i don't recommend 
that you do it yourself unless you want to learn more about Figma and how it works. You'll learn a lot of things, not just hacks in the design that might change, but also if you select something, you'll see this X and Y, like shifting things outside of their frame. This is really helpful. So I'm not going to go through exactly how this works because it's beyond the scope of this video and it's going to take a long time. But know that you can do the same. You can go to the uh, Breakpoints plugin, you can use it, and then you can analyze how it's working. Let's zoom in on this one and let's look at what's happening here. So this is our largest frame. And then if we move in a little bit, you can see once we hit this point, it switches to the other frame and so on. It keeps resizing according to which point we're at. This is a great way to present your design to other people. And what is cool about it is that if we, if I zoom outside a little bit, I will bring up the UI again. Now presenting your frame inside a device is really easy. If I want to present this frame inside a MacBook Pro 14 inch frame, I will just press on it. Now I changed the frame to the MacBook Pro 14 inch frame and I will deselect the frame, go to prototype and choose the presenting device to be MacBook Pro 14 inch. Select the frame again, then press present. I wish there was a way that when you change the size of the frame to a device that already they have set, the presenting device would change as well. And here it is. I can get back here, select the frame, go to design. We said that this would work on tablets, so let's try it on an iPad mini and you can see that the design is not breaking. I can switch to prototype and select the device to be iPad mini, select the frame. We don't need to present it one more time. It will do it automatically. So we can come back here and you can see that the design is presenting inside an iPad mini. One more thing we can do, if we get back to the Pinterest design, you can notice that when we go down to two pins, there's something else that is happening that we didn't do in our design that the search bar is removed. And in place of it, we have this search icon. Let's get back to Figma. Let's press shift one, just zoom in on our frame over here. Instead of making changes here, let's create a variant for the header I already created a variant for the header. So basically, what I did is that I selected the header, I pressed on this plus button, if you don't find the plus button in front of you, you will have an option here to add variant. When you do this, it will duplicate it and then you can make changes to it and give it a name. So this is what I did. Let's get back to the design. This is the only design where this is going to happen. Select the search bar and then change its property one from default to icon. And then in its auto layout settings, select the alignment and padding and then select right that's it that's all we needed to do if we resize it it already stays in place and that's it we're done if you found this useful support this channel by liking the video if you want to follow along while i break down the design and dev lessons i study make sure to subscribe if you haven't already also if you have any questions suggestions objections leave a comment below and i'll make sure to get to it